San Diego just days away from finally moving up to the red tier. We're going to break down everything that means. San Diego's tourism industry is suffering terribly because of the pandemic. Why recovering will likely take years. So you've been staying good? And a mother and son finally able to hold hands and talk face to face for the first time in a year. ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. San Diego is expected to move into the red tier next week. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. This means businesses like gyms, restaurants, and movie theaters, they will be able to reopen indoors at limited capacity. Our ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala breaks it all down. California has reached its goal of vaccinating 2 million people in some of the communities hit the hardest by COVID-19, meaning the state's reopening plan has been updated. It's really, really exciting. Before, counties had to have a case rate of 7 per 100,000 people to get out of the most restrictive purple tier. That number has now changed to 10 per 100,000. The state says San Diego County is expected to be reassigned to the red tier on Tuesday, with changes taking effect on Wednesday. In the red tier, gyms, museums, movie theaters, and restaurants will be able to reopen indoors at a limited capacity. When we have rainy days, that crushes business for that day. But uh, if we can be inside now then that shouldn't be a problem. Sean Hale is the general manager for El Cruce 241 in Chula Vista. The restaurant opened in October during the pandemic. It was only shortly after we opened that, you know, restrictions came back. He's looking forward to officially welcoming new customers. We're ready to, to get back people back inside. We have all this space here, a, a lovely interior that we're, we're just not able to take advantage of. Uh, so we're really excited. Another big change to come on Monday, vaccine eligibility is expanding to Californians between the ages of 16 and 64 with specific high risk medical conditions or disabilities, including cancer, chronic kidney disease, heart conditions, Down syndrome and more. But supply remains an issue, so appointments will be limited. The state's guidance says those who are eligible should first try to go through their health care provider. Other options will include pharmacies, local health departments, community pop-up clinics, and the state's My Turn website. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. People who qualify for a vaccine Monday will not have to show documentation, but they will be asked to sign a self-attestation that they meet the criteria. And a reminder, the Del Mar Vaccine Superstation will be closed through Sunday because of a shortfall in vaccine deliveries. People with appointments on one of those dates should have been rescheduled through the My Turn online system. Local high school football players, they are finally returning to the field. One of those games took place this afternoon between Santa Fe Christian and Orange Glen High School. Those high school athletes have not played actual games since before the pandemic. There are a lot of restrictions in place, including no fans in the stands. In less than an hour, Scripps Ranch High School will take on Mira Mesa High School in their first game back. We'll have a live report coming up on ABC 10 News at 7 o'clock. San Diego tourism has been hammered by the pandemic with layoffs across the air travel, cruise and recreation industries. ABC 10 News reporter Jennifer De La Cruz explains why it will likely take a long time for those industries to bounce back. With 70 miles of coastline and perfect weather year round, it's no surprise tourism is a key sector of San Diego's economy. But thanks to coronavirus, the city reports visitor spending dropped by more than $6 billion from 2019 to 2020. Hotel reservations were canceled, planes were grounded, and cruise ships were tethered to dry land. Massive layoffs in aviation caused tens of thousands to lose their jobs. United Airlines flight attendant Dante Harris was no exception. What was going through my mind as a 21 year flight attendant is how is this possible? With constantly changing guidelines and limited job security, Harris says the toll on his mental health hit hard. The stress actually going to work and trying to enforce the mask rule, that was one of the biggest uh, issues. According to a new Sandag report, 90% of job losses in our region came from tourism, education, and retail. There was a 90% decrease in international air travel, and 75% of cruise ship stops were canceled from our port. Thanks to federal relief programs, Harris and many others eventually got their jobs back. And while his time in the air is an experience he'd never trade. There is no other job like this. Uh, I've been to all corners of 
the urban. Aviation's first responders still need your help. Say hello when you get on the flight to set the tone. When we're in the air, 35,000 feet, we're all in this together. He's hoping a little more kindness and a lot more vaccine will get tourism back to thriving and you back to exploring. I think that travel is going to rebound in a big way. Forget the politics, forget everything else. Take care of each other. Jennifer Dela Cruz, ABC 10 News. The San Diego Tourism Authority says the visitor industry lost 20 years of economic gain in 2020. And they say it will take about five years to recover. Starting tomorrow, outdoor breweries will be able to pour drinks without having to serve food as well. The state changed the guidelines that required food service. Second Chance Brewery CEO Virginia Morrison says that even with the expanded guidelines, she plans to keep on serving food. That's because restaurants can open up to 25% indoors when the county enters the red tier. We got clarification that we could continue to operate as a restaurant. I was excited, ironically. <laughs> Good for them. Under the new rules, brewery customers must have advanced reservations and will be limited to 90 minutes. All on-site alcoholic beverage consumption must end at 8 p.m. A countywide rally is set for tomorrow, calling for local schools to reopen. Today, families in Carlsbad held a sit-in, although it was really more people standing with signs. Families gathered outside Carlsbad and Sage Creek High Schools, as well as Calavera Valley and Aviara Oaks Middle Schools. And like many school rallies as of late, the families want schools to reopen for in-person learning immediately. One month from today, San Diego Unified students will finally be allowed back on campus. Today, we visited Hoover High in City Heights. The district showed us improvements that they're making to keep students safe. It includes better ventilation, which is crucial for preventing the spread of coronavirus. Despite the changes, class won't be quite back to normal. We need to continue to do some things that may not be comfortable for everybody, keeping the masks on, keeping the separation but it's the way that we keep everybody safe. Teachers will return to campus a week before students to learn the new safety protocols. Families still have the option of choosing distance learning. Stay on top of any new developments with coronavirus by downloading the 10 News app. A free version is available in the App Store. The unemployment rate in San Diego County is up a bit tonight. The local jobless rate in January, it was 8.1%. That's a tenth of a point higher than December and much higher than our pre-pandemic rate of 3.4% a year ago. The biggest job losses in January came in the leisure and hospitality fields. We are still doing better than California as a whole. The statewide unemployment rate is 9%. Turning now to our weather and a live look outside. The rain has moved out, but things are still cold and windy out there. Our meteorologist Angelica Campos joins us with a look at when we can expect a warm up and your weekend forecast. Hi, Steve. Let's take a look at the current conditions first. We talked about the chilly air, right? Temperatures in the 20s still in the mountains, allowing for any additional moisture to lead to snow. 50s across our coastal communities and inland valleys. And the winds are targeting our mountains and deserts. That'll continue to be the case this weekend, even as the rain moves out. Right now, Pinpoint Doppler Live looking a little bit drier, but we do have to keep an eye on what's coming because there's still a couple of bands out there that may still produce a little bit of moisture. And as I put this in motion, you can see the movement now of those showers and even heavy downpours from Lake Elsinore is going to be southward. So it's going to be moving potentially into areas like Bonzo, Camp Pendleton, San Marcos. We'll be monitoring those conditions throughout the hour as it will be changing. We'll have much more coming up. Thank you, Angelica. And today, Harbor Police released new video of a dramatic police shooting that happened right outside the convention center on March 1st. We'll take a look at this surveillance video. It shows the driver standing outside his car, and soon the officer starts running as the driver opens fire. The officer quickly jumped behind the trunk of his patrol car. Police also released that officer's body camera footage of the very same moment. You're going to get out of your vehicle and you're going to come over here and talk to me. Come here. Hey, put that gun down. Fire, shots fired. Shots fired. Hey. I 
As you can see, he didn't put the gun down. Officers arrested 29-year-old Daniel Kiraz. Police say that he was pulled over just for running a red light. Well, neither the officer nor the suspect was injured, and we posted the entire video of the department released on 10news.com. A judge handed a former Navy man the maximum sentence today for murdering his wife. Matthew Sullivan stabbed his wife Elizabeth to death in 2014 at their Liberty Station home. He then hid her body in a freezer for nearly two years. On the day he planned to move out of town, he dumped her body in San Diego Bay. Sullivan was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison for second degree murder. And a former San Diego Sheriff's captain who pleaded guilty to running an illegal gun trafficking ring, he will spend two years in prison. Marco Garmer was sentenced this morning. He bought and resold guns available only to law enforcement while falsifying records. Today, the judge described it as a level where Garmo almost became a mob boss. He'll also have to pay $8,300 in fines. And the search continues for the shooter who killed a 17-year-old in a Chula Vista Park last night. It happened at Sunset View Park just east of State Route 125 in East Lake. Witnesses say the victim was with friends at the park when he got into an argument with a group of young men. One of them shot the teenager and then left with his companions in a dark-colored four-door Acura or Honda sedan. Police say there's no evidence that this is linked to the shooting of a 15-year-old in the same park last weekend.